Welcome to Rumble Book Club. I'm your host, Michael Hernandez, and this is the show where a normal guy like me can talk about interesting books I've read, old and new, good and bad. So if you like the show, you like the books that I talk about, you like the content, or maybe I just have a punchable face, whatever keeps you clicking, cowboy, you can follow me. I'm on Twitter and Parlor, or you can subscribe to my content on Rumble or on YouTube. More importantly than that, share the content with your friends and let's talk about it. Comment on my videos, let me know if there's uh, any books that you want me to cover and I might give you a shout out and uh, read it on one of my next reviews. So today we're going to be taking a look at one of my favorite books concerning raising children. As a father, uh, father of four, uh, I, I definitely need all the help I can get because... I mean, I'm, I'm imperfect. I'm as, as imperfect as anybody, and every so often I need help, and this is really the guy you want to go to for help. Today we're going to take a look at The Well-Behaved Child by Dr. John Rosemond. Dr. John Rosemond is a clinical psychologist in the state of North Carolina. Uh, he's a public speaker, he's a child-raising expert, duh, and he's a traditionalist uh, that's had a long-time syndicated uh, column, uh, newspaper column on parenting. And uh, he also had a radio show called Because I Said So. Why? Because I SAID SO! On a side note, parents, that's really a phrase you want to get used to if you're a new parent. Learn that phrase, Because I Said So. All right, let's take a look at the aesthetics. Woo! Busy, busy, busy. This isn't the original copy. This is a reprinting, and I gotta say, I'm not a fan. It's a little too colorful for me. It's kind of distracting. It has all these colors going every which way. Boom! It's like, a, it's like an explosion. It's crazy. But, uh, in the very least, the, the title is pretty clear, easy to read, and uh, the picture's kind of good. You have, you have this little girl with the little angel wings and the halo. Kind of symbolizing if you follow this stuff, your child will be a little angel. Well, you're not fooling me, little child. We both know you're not an angel. But that's okay. You know what? Because this book lets you know that your, your child is never going to be this perfect little angel. But this shows you how to respond on those moments where they're a little... <laughs> so, so, as far as uh, the aesthetics go, 7 out of 10. Let's take a look at the readability. It's funny move smoothly the topics uh, are, are easy to understand because it's all rooted in common sense so on a side note one of the things I really like about John John Roseman is he has this kind of old person's <laughs> like dry sense of humor you know if you're like sitting on a sitting on a, a rocking chair in the deep south sitting with an old man on a straw hat and he was just like throwing these little old person witticisms that's kind of like what it's like reading one of his books and you kind of laugh to yourself as you're reading so makes it a fun read as far as the the physical physical nature of the book that what makes it easy to read is that it has cream colored pages with clear font it has a couple uh little drawings not not that much uh just enough to emphasize the point paragraph breaks no big walls of text so it's easy on the eyes easy on the brain it's a perfect read as far as readability goes readability is 10 out of 10. Oh, ho, ho. now let's look at the content. Raising a child now is considered to be one of the most stressful things in life. Everywhere you look, when you when you go on TikTok, when you go on, on Twitter, when you look at people's blogs, when you look at Facebook, all these parents, especially mothers, just seem to be strung out. They look like people on heroin, just sweating and disheveled and on the edge of their rope. It, their rep statistics today show that mothers are reporting more stress and unhappiness with their with their children and in their parent their own parenting skills they're showing more stress and, and unhappiness than that than than ever and it's sad to see and it makes you wonder why it's that damn sasquatch no it's not that damn sasquatch you know what it is it was from the 1960s what John Roseman really lays out in this book is this 1960s psychology, this whole self-esteem and, and happiness uh, of the child, the fact that that became the sole focus of parenting, that took priority over morality and discipline and how to make your child well-adjusted, how to make them capable of networking and making friends and being selfless and respecting their elders, these traditional values, those just went all out the window and everything became is your little prince just the happiest little booger you ever knew isn't your princess just the greatest little 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 unicorn that ever did prance around the earth and they blew up this image of your child as being the center of your life and it's not it's a lie your children are not supposed to be the very center of your life maybe from the first two years and that's described in his book, Making the Terrible Twos Terrific. But in those first, 
I'd say year and a half, yeah, they're the center because they're so needy. But as they grow older, they're able to handle more responsibility, especially more than experts seem to, to give them credit for. They can handle a lot more as far as responsibility, what they can learn, what they can comprehend, and how they're able to behave. Another thing that John Roseman notes is that marriage began to take the back seat in the 60s to the whims of the child. And that was a huge mistake. What you were doing there was letting the inmates run the asylum. It was a terrible idea. And that's one another reason why there's so many broken homes is because the marriage took the back seat as soon as you had kids. That's not supposed to happen. What John Roseman explains in that every generation before the 1960s seemed to know was the marriage always came first. First. You have a foundation of faith with your marriage right, right below that. And then once those two pillars were set, then you focus on the child. But the priority before your, your child was always your marriage. Focus on your marriage. So when it came to, to all this, this crazy nightmare of, of child psychology generated in the 1960s and only getting worse every single year, what John Roseman and grandparents for that matter all say is no mas, no more, no more bad parenting, no more letting your children have the keys to the kingdom and letting them walk all over you. Act like a parent. I can't stress that enough. You have to actually use your authority, be calm, be cool and in control like a cucumber. No yelling. You don't have to scream like I'm screaming right now. Draw clear and simple lines and expectations and have preset disciplines set in place when they're not met. So you explain things to your child. This is what I expect. You know, whether that's wh whether that's chores or public behavior or grades or how to address adults. Have your expectations set beforehand. Tell your child, spell it out for him. He knows what to do in the clearest and most simple terms. He knows how to do it, and he knows what will happen if he fails. It's that simple. Now, he also includes in the book some discipline tactics, but I, he, he warns parents, and I'm gonna warn you right now, do not just skip to the discipline. Don't do it, it's a huge mistake. You're cutting through mountains of gold just to find one little diamond, okay? The discipline tactics are great, they're very useful. My wife and I have used these on our kids, they've definitely helped, but there's a mountain of wonderful information and wisdom you can get around that, that discipline chapter. So do not skip it, don't skip it! One of the, the, the final points, uh, or definitely something that I got out of it, that I use in my parenting strategies every single day, is that 90% of having a well, well behaved child is attitude. Being able to carry yourself like a professional. You're an adult. Act like the adult. Be calm. Have that lower inflection. When you're telling your child something, don't be like, Billy, Billy, I really need you to... To, to pick up your toys, okay? And then when you pick up your toys, we we can have ice cream. Do you want ice cream? Do you want ice cream? No, you sound like a creep when you do that. You get down on your hands and knees and talk to little Billy. No, don't do it. What you need to do is tower over him like the adult you are and say, Billy, your toys are a mess. Pick up your toys, put them in the basket. Boom, that's it, that's it. Anyway, outside of my manic behavior, uh, as far as the content goes, it's a strong, strong, STRONG 10 out of 10. I found this book at Barnes & Noble. You could probably also find it at Barnes & Noble as well as multiple other providers. It is still, to this day, a very popular book. But if all else fails, if you happen to live in a hole in the wall or out in the middle of the desert, you can always order from Amazon or eBay and get yourself a copy. I can't tell you how much I recommend this book for parents. You will not regret getting it, reading it, and applying it. Easy read, simple application. Go out and get yourself a copy. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and go read something.